I'm gonna, we're gonna zoom out for this video. The makeup is not makeuping today because I demoed 10 products if you have dry skin that you should avoid. Of course, when it comes to complexion and all of that, it is very, very personal. But these are 10 products that I feel like are relevant, viral, popular, or new that you might have your eye on. And if you have dry skin, I personally would recommend for you to avoid these. These don't work out for me and my dry skin. And you'll even see in the demos, skin is not looking hot today with these products. No matter what skin type you have though, if you have oily skin, this video could potentially be of value to you. I mean, there's a couple of products that I think are just downright bad, but there's some products where they definitely don't work on my skin, but I, I think they might work for oily skin. So if you're new to my channel, I have dry skin. I actually just moved from Florida to Maryland and my skin is suffering. It has not been this dry in a long, long time. And that's definitely coming through in all of the makeup looks that I'm doing. I'm seeing products that worked better for me in Miami and not <laughs> so much for me in Maryland. So I've been re-experiencing makeup lately with a different skin type due to the climate that I'm in. Anyways, let's get into the products. Now I find that for dry skin, what is most likely to emphasize dry skin is foundations, concealers, and setting powders. So that's what most of this video consists of. So let's start off with the base complexion foundation style products. The first one is a brand new one. I just wanted to send out a warning to my fellow dry skin gals who are thinking about this because it does sound like it would be for dry skin. This is the ABH Beauty Balm Serum Boosted Skin Tint. I just recently filmed a video testing this for the first time, but I've been testing it for about four or five wears now. Don't recommend this for dry skin. When you slide it on the skin, it just looks heavy and dry. It's caking on to the nose right here. It's really interesting because it's a skin tint, it is thinner, it is lighter, it has less coverage but it sits on top of my skin. Now, I actually wouldn't recommend this for oily skin either. This is just one of those products that I kind of don't really recommend. I've had decent skin days with this, but it is really temperamental with what you have underneath. I saw a comment that was really informative saying like, there is so much skincare ingredients housed in this product that it reacts with a lot of skincare that you might have underneath. So this definitely works best with pretty much nothing on the skin. I've only had good days with this when I've literally wiped my skincare off and then it wouldn't react to anything. But I swear, even with just a moisturizer, my skin reacts to this. So today I had nothing on my face because I didn't want it to pill or it pills with anything, okay? I didn't want it to pill. So I have nothing else on my face. And even then, it looks dry. So I don't recommend this for anybody, but if you have dry skin, it will also look dry on the skin. So fair warning, this new product, not for me. I can have okay skin days with this if I don't have any skincare underneath, but that happens never. This pills when I have anything underneath. And I have dry skin. I always need to be hydrated. So. No. Expect to see this in more videos talking about how much I don't like it. The saga is just beginning for that one. <laughs> to be mentioned products I don't like. Okay, the next one I recommend for oily skin a lot. And if you have dry skin, run far, 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 far away. The Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Balm Tints. This is even looking drier than the ABH side today. It just clings to my dry patches, especially on my nose. It's looking hecka hecka thirsty. So many people with oily skin I've heard have had amazing experiences with this product. It almost dries down without any setting or anything over top and the wear time on this, even on myself, is really great. It's just the formulation of this product. It really is attracted to the dryness and flakiness on my skin. So it never ever looks good on me. I also find it can look heavy on my skin as well. But I've heard this is a lifesaver for oily skin. So this is definitely an oily skin product. I love Danessa Merricks. I think she comes out with amazing products. If you have oily skin, look into her tinted moisturizer. That will be game changing. But this one, if you have oily skin, I've heard a lot of praise from my oily skin girls. 
The next product that I have is a product I don't recommend for anybody, but if you have dry skin, I definitely don't recommend it for you. And it's another one of those products where it's like you think it would be good for dry skin. This is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Skin Tint. This emphasizes dry patches that, to be honest, I didn't even know was there. I can be post-exfoliation, and this product would find a way to cling to the dry patches. It's patchy as well if we're just talking on formulation, not how it works on skin type. It patches up, it peels up on itself, I can never get even coverage, but to place this in the not for dry skin category, it also clings to dry patches, and you would think it's a skin tint, so skin tints tend to be better formulated for more dry skin tints. But don't be fooled by this. I don't recommend it for anybody, but there's an extra layer to make it worse for those of us with dry skin. Let me know if you've tried this and made it work, but that is one product where I felt hate the moment, <laughs> the moment it touched my skin. There was no upside to it, no, you know, trying to make it work. There was no making it work. The last foundation that I have is one that I have heard is a holy grail for oily skin. So the formula is good. It's not a bad, unworkable formula, but it sucks the life out of my skin. <laughs> Truly sucks the life out of it. It's actually very, very long wearing. I have made this work by prepping my skin accordingly, but it still was always just like a little too dry on me. That is the YSL All Hours Foundation. So this isn't one that I'm going to steer everybody away from. I think if you have oily skin, this one could work great for you. It's a nice thin consistency, so it doesn't feel heavy on the skin, but it has decent coverage, all things considered, and it wears a super long time. But if you have dry skin, it's one of the products where it will feel drying on the skin. You will feel it soaking the moisture out of your skin. Sometimes thin foundations do that. And especially something to watch out for when it comes to dry skin, sometimes a thin foundation also finds itself attracted to dry skin. So this one, it's a good formula. Even I can tell if I truly take the time to prep my skin accordingly, I can make this work for me, but I don't want to have to. She's dry, she's not meant for me, but maybe for you. I mean, in general, if you have dry skin, I recommend to stay away from the all hours line from YSL altogether because also we're moving into concealers. The YSL All Hours Precise Angles Concealer is another one where I've just thought it has always looked really dry on my under eyes. Sometimes I can find that there is a little bit of flakiness around the inner corner of my eye and right around the tear duct area. And I find that drier concealers do emphasize the dryness there. Something you'll also notice with the dry concealer is it will look really cakey along the fine lines that are along the lash line. This is one of those that does. It's not a terrible concealer, but it's thin. It doesn't have too much coverage and it is attracted to dryness. Generally speaking, I don't really recommend this for any skin type. I just don't think it's an amazing concealer. You can make it work, even I can make it work, but it does not complement dry skin whatsoever. It's one of the drier formulas in my collection. If this was a thick consistency, it would be game over. I would hate this concealer, but because it's more thin, it is more workable. But nonetheless, it dries out my under eyes. <laughs> so it's one of these new ones that I just can't recommend. I don't think dry skin would like it, but to be honest, I don't even really think oily skin would like it as well. This next one is a good formula, just bad for dry under eyes and dry skin. This is the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Awakening Concealer. This just by nature, it's a drier formula. It actually isn't bad. It sets itself pretty well. It wears a long time. It has a nice coverage to it, but it wears such a long time because it does have more of a drier consistency. Now you can have a drier concealer, but if it sets and it wears a long time, there is that upside. So for me, I'm not reaching for this concealer on a daily basis because I do need to prep, I do need to prepare, but I'm not not reaching for this because I do feel like if I have an, a long evening in a warmer climate, like Miami for example, I got more use out of this concealer. But I really, after I've moved to Maryland and everything is more dry for me, I do really see how drying this is. I highly recommend this 
for oily skin. It's thin, it has good coverage, it lasts a long time. So this is a good concealer and even if you have dry skin, you can prep it well enough to make this work. But again, the whole thing with makeup, it's like, do you want to have to make it work? By nature, this is not for dry skin. This is for oily skin, in my opinion. So yeah, this one, she's drying. So those are the two concealers I have for today's video. We're going to move into powders. And I think powders are also, like, foundations and powders, those are the two where if they don't agree with dry skin, like, you can tell you, they don't like dry skin. So I'm going to start off with the two newest powders. If you've been watching my most recent videos, you would know. This one is the drier of the two new concealers. I don't know that I'd recommend this for anybody. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Press Setting Powder. It's like ultra blur, supposedly. I don't find it to be very blurring. I do find it to be ultra drying. It feels dry on the skin. It looks dry on the skin. It clings to dry patches again that aren't even there. And it dries out the skin so like when you smile, you know, dry skin can have that kind of stretched, thirsty look. That is what this powder emphasizes. So unfortunately, with this new item, I just, I don't really recommend it at all. It's not a very good powder. If you're looking for a good powder, the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. Very nice. I don't find it to be too drying on my skin. I find it to be very blurring. The press form of it is a no-go for me. Definitely not good for dry skin. And this next one is new. Very, very new. I did a whole review video on it. The Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Press Powder. I don't really recommend this for dry skin. I do recommend this for oily skin. This is not an amazing setting powder. It isn't anything that I would say is at the top of the market, the best of the best. But it, I don't think it's a bad powder, but I don't think it does us dry skin girls any favors because it's, it just sucks you a little bit dry, which I think is why oily skin might really like it. It does not have as dry and a thirsty of a finish as the Laura Mercier. I don't recommend this powder for the under eyes. It looks dry on the under eyes, but there is a saving grace to it. I think it's really pretty when pressed into the rest of the face. It's supposed to be really great for a touch-up powder as well, which I've experienced as a touch-up powder. It is great, but again, I have dry skin. I don't need to touch up that much. But this does, unlike the Laura Mercier, have some blurring capabilities. I just don't recommend it for dry skin because it looks a little bit dry, but I think that dryness is going to be really nice on oily skin. This is a very expensive powder, so I'm not going to say it's a must-have, but if you are interested in Hourglass and you're interested in this powder, if you have oily skin, I think you will like it a lot more than me. The next one, it's another case of the... Don't buy the press version. The loose version is so much better. The Huda Beauty Easy Bake and Snatch Pressed Brightening and Setting Powder. Don't say with this, it is not smoothing like the, the loose one. The loose one is so smooth. I did a side-by-side -side TikTok, and when I had this on the under eyes, you saw the bumps, lumps, and texture. It just looked dry. And then the side with the loose powder, it looked just seamless, poreless, so smooth. Yeah, this is not the same formula in a pressed form of the Huda Beauty Loose Setting Powder. This is dry. It's not horrible. Like, I'm really coming for the Laura Mercier, I'm sorry, but this is not as drying as the Laura Mercier, but this is drying. If you want a Huda Beauty Loose Setting Powder and you have dry skin, go for the loose version, stay away from the pressed version. She'll dry you out. And then the last powder that I have is a good formula, and I'd recommend it for oily skin, but I would not recommend it for dry skin. There are other loose powders on the market that will better suit dry skin. So don't recommend the One Size Ultimate Setting Powder. Oh my god. I was worried that the dryness wasn't going to show up in the demo, and like it would look like it would make a liar out of me. That was not, that was not an issue. <laughs> skin looks terrible today. Now generally speaking I would say one size caters to oily skin. They have a couple good products that work for me but their complexion I really have to prep well for because the products are definitely targeted for oily skin. Patrick has said it himself. This one I wore a lot in Miami. I did a good job in the Miami humidity because 
while I'm dry, I actually am very sweaty. So sometimes I do prefer to wear products for oily skin if I'm going to be sweaty because they hold up better even if I look a little dry. Put a lot of a hydrating setting spray on and just throughout the day, my sweats, my natural oils, my skin will adjust, the makeup will look better. But this is a very dry setting powder. I think, you know, if you have dry skin, you might have your eye on this because this is very popular, it's very viral. There's a lot of impressive videos of it lasting all day, and it does, but don't get this if you have dry skin. It's a drying powder. I would recommend the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder, Maybelline Fit Me Loose Setting Powder if you are looking at the drugstore. Givenchy has a beautiful setting powder. What was the other one? Laura Mercier has an amazing loose setting powder. Go for that, you'll get the blurring effect with all of those and they won't look as dry as this is. This one has a lot of thickness to it as well. It has some body to it and that body will emphasize the texture that sometimes dry skin can leave behind. So oily skin though, you you probably love this. And so finishing off with the last product, a setting spray. The ingredients in this by nature just suck the life out of the skin. But that's what makes it work so well. I will use this in Miami, but it does leave my skin dry. And I'm following up with the one size mattifying waterproof setting spray. So I already gave you the warning. One size is typically made for oily skin. This is quite literally a hairspray for the face. Even the smell, the feel, it makes the skin feel tight if you have dry skin. But if you have oily skin, you are beat down with makeup and you want it to last all night, this will work. Even I found, like in Miami, I would occasionally use this, but I would have to be mindful of the products that I had on underneath because I don't know if there's alcohol in this, but it feels like it. It is, it is waterproof, set proof, transfer proof, mattifying. All of those are translation for disaster for dry skin. So I wanted to talk about this and mention it because people will say this is the best setting spray ever. It will make your makeup last forever, untouchable, waterproof. Those claims are true, but also just be aware if you have dry skin like it just feels like it pulls the moisture out so not a bad product at all but definitely something to avoid if you have dry skin so i hope you guys found this video helpful even if you have oily skin i hope that i was able to help you out i am no longer an active working makeup artist so if you feel differently than i do definitely comment down below so let's get talking in the comments if you have dry skin what are some products that you do recommend that you think react very well to your skin? Same thing with oily skin. What is a really good oily skin product that you recommend that, especially if I mention something in this video, if you agree or disagree with oily skin, I need to know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you so much for commenting and liking, right? You liked it <laughs> and subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.